Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. Did you know or did you realize that this Tuesday, January the 11th, 2022, is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day? Jesus said that if we do it for the least of these, we do it as unto him. I'm telling you that these people who are held captive, who are held for the sex trade, are the least of these. These young women, young boys, young girls, they're being trafficked and they need us to speak up on their behalf. They need someone to do something. My message today is entitled, Speak Up for the Least of These. Turn with me, please, to Proverbs 31, verse 8 through 9. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Proverbs admonishes each and every one of us to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. We have to uphold the rights of those who are destitute. This one verse covers them all. It covers every single one. It covers the unborn, the sex trafficked, the enslaved, the poor and exploited, the widow, the orphan, the fatherless. It covers them all. And we are to speak up for these. We're to uphold their right. We're to speak out. I wonder what will the politicians do when they stand before God? They're charged with creating fair and just laws, laws to protect, laws to help their constituents be fruitful and prosper. They're voted in to look out for the rights and the affairs of people that they represent. But instead, they create unjust laws. They create unfair laws. So what will they answer, Almighty God, who is coming to judge the quick and the dead? What will their answer be on that great and dreadful day when God sits on his throne to judge? I, for one, do not envy them. The thing is, it's not just here in America. The whole world has sold out to the system. Think about it. Do you suppose that it's just by mere coincidence that every nation and almost every politician, every school and every, in every nation on this earth is teaching and pushing the same agenda? Is it by mere coincidence that the wealth of the nations are being transferred to the super rich? Is it by mere coincidence that there are an estimated 27 million victims of human trafficking worldwide and supposedly nothing can be done about it? Absolutely nothing. Others have estimated this number to be even higher, as high as 40 million victims. But someone would say, can this be true? Can there really be that much sexual immorality in the world? I believe it to be true. I believe it to be so blatant that the Bible had to address it in Revelation chapter 18, verse 11 through 13. And the merchants of the world weep and mourn for her, since no one buys their cargo anymore, cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented wood, all kinds of articles of ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses and chariots, and slaves, that is, human souls. So it is entirely possible, and you better believe that it's possible, because it's happening right now. It's happening right now in our time and in our world. It's not somewhere else in some other time. It's happening right now. It is said that there are more people enslaved today than the 400 years of transatlantic slave trade. And nothing, absolutely nothing, can be done about it. And of all the millions of those who are enslaved, 70% of the victims are for sexual exploitation. 
70%. Think about it. The victims are forced to service as many as 40 clients a day. These victims range in age from as old as 25 and as young as 6 years of age. And you did hear me right. I said 6 years old. Statistics say that they're forced to repay their own travel expenses within the first month, which can range anywhere from 1500 to 2500 Listen to this statistic. Turnkey prices range from $1,000 to $2,500, depending on age, beauty, whether she's problematic, or whether she behaves well. But in Germany, they are even more expensive. If or when the victim gets pregnant, she is taken to someplace else where the child is delivered and the newborn is immediately sold to a pedophile who, who, where this child is now spends the rest of their life as a sex slave from birth on up. These are terrifying and heartbreaking statistics. But my question is, how do they know all of this. How do they get all of this statistics, but yet are unable to do anything about it? You can spit off these statistics as if you're talking about a goat or cattle or some farm animal, but you can do nothing about these people. They are people, human beings, people our Lord Jesus came to die for. The scripture Proverbs 31 verse 8 says, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. These are little children. They're young people and they cannot speak up for themselves. They have no rights because their rights have been taken away from them and nobody seems to be doing anything to help them. Of course, of course, they, there are private organizations who are doing their best to make a difference, who are doing their best to rescue these children, who are doing their best to rescue and, and uh, rehabilitate these young women, these young girls, these young boys. But what I'm saying is, when was the last time you heard of a World G8 Summit dedicated to finding and prosecuting the perpetrators of sex crimes and freeing and rehabilitating their 21 to 40 million victims. I'm not talking about what the UN do every year where they go through their make-believe ritual of bringing awareness to human trafficking. Besides, is anybody aware of what the UN is doing? What their efforts are? I, for one, I have no clue. I have no clue. I've never seen it. I don't know. What I'm talking about is real results, not some smoke screen trying to make yourself look like you're truly concerned. I mean, these big tech companies can ban their members if they do not push their agenda. They can censor videos and take them down. We know we have had our video taken down. We have had, we, we've been put in timeout for just questioning the narrative. But with the sex trade, they can do nothing. They can't ban the sites. They can't take them down. It's just hard to believe. It's really, really hard to believe that that is so, that that is really the case. Think about this for a moment. You can have a normal conversation about anything. Say a mattress, for instance. And five seconds later, you have a mattress ad showing up on your phone. We can listen to private law-abiding citizens conversation, but we can't track down one sex, sex trafficker. You say your main priority is human rights. Your main priority is women's rights. I say, if you're truly invested, start here. Start with the 27 plus million human trafficking victims of human trafficking since it's a worldwide problem you should be able to do that because you are the united nations you say you're you're committed to human rights or, or to women rights well it's estimated that 
80% of the 27 to 40 million worldwide victims are female. 50% are children. That means that the victims are mostly little girls. Surely with your great power, surely with your great reach, you can do something if you're truly committed. I mean, these little boys, these little girls are held prisoners and used as sex slaves and nothing can be done for them. As much power and intel as the CIA has, nothing, nothing can be done. Somehow, I find that extremely difficult to believe. You know the statistics. You know how it works. You even know where are the best prices, but you can do nothing? They tell us that human trafficking for forced labor and sexual exploitation is the world's second most lucrative crime, running in the billions of dollars in annual profits. But yet, the governments of these infested regions either ignores or makes little to no effort to prevent human trafficking. And the great UN is okay with that. Or seems to be okay with that. Because, I mean, look at this. Take this for instance. Let us, let us just define what they say is a problematic or an infested region. The top 10 worst countries are this. Somalia being number one. Libya. Yemen. Syria, Russia, North Korea, Belarus, Sudan and South Sudan, Venezuela, and Algeria. If you would notice, every one of these countries are a member of the United Nations. Yet, there's absolutely nothing that can be done for or against or to prevent this most heinous crime. Are you kidding me? These countries can gain membership and enjoy all the benefits of being a member, but they don't have to abide, they don't have to obey the laws and the human right laws that are set forth by the United Nations? No. Something is definitely wrong with that picture. To me, that screams farce in the highest degree. They're not committed to humans. They're not committed to human rights. They're not committed to stopping human trafficking. For whatever reasons, it's just obvious. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. And in this case, the pudding is results. Show me your results, and I will show you your commitment. Words are cheap, and words can be deceptive, but results speak truth. I don't believe that raising awareness is the job of the UN. To me, the job of the UN is to produce results. Whatever agenda they want to push gets results. It produces results. It is all according to their priority. Posting a picture with a hashtag from behind fences and security guards in your multi-million dollar homes is just not enough. There are organizations that you can donate to. There are organizations that you can support that helps free these victims, that help stop these crimes, that help rehabilitate these people, these women, these children. And we'll put a link to these organizations who are actively working at rescuing the exploited um, down below. All you have to do is to click on it. So I would encourage you to click on, on some of those links and begin to support these groups, these organizations who are actively trying to help the exploited. But I want you to think about this. Statistics claim that women are bought and sold between pimps. One will sell to, to another and he in turn will sell to someone else, and so on. Each one incurring more and more debt. They incur more and more expenses that affect the pimp's bottom line. And who is responsible for said debt? 
who is responsible to repay those expenses? The poor, unfortunate victim. That's who. Can you just believe that? That is totally unbelievable. These are women. They are not merchandise. They are human beings. They are children of God. And they should be given that respect. But instead, they are simply, they just simply become property, property of the pimp. And they're routinely beaten and forced to live in subhuman levels and, and forced to repay the pimp's debts that he incurred while victimizing them. Apparently, it is a really vicious industry where no one can be trusted. I read the story of one trafficker who sold his acquaintance for $1,000. He and his female friend went to Turkey on a business trip to buy furniture and supplies for a startup business that she and her mom was starting. Since she paid her travel expenses, he found it to be financially profitable. After she was uncooperative, he sold her to a notoriously wicked pimp. After hearing about, uh, about that, the guy felt sorry for her and he went and told her boyfriend what he had done. The two of them set out to rescue her. She was pregnant at the time. The other frightening thing is, it is not just men involved in the trade, but it is women as well. Women lure, abduct, and sell other women into the sex trafficking trade. So don't be fooled though. The problem is not in some faraway country with names that you cannot pronounce. The leb.fbi.gov website wrote this, and I quote, Among children and teens living on the streets in the United States, involvement in commercial sex activity is a problem of epidemic proportions. End of quote. It is of epidemic proportions right here at home as well. It's not just worldwide. It's happening right here in the United States. And in states that we wouldn't even think about or think that it would be happening. In. The five top states for sex trafficking are Texas at number five. Ohio at number four, Georgia at number three, California at number two. And top of the list is Florida at number one. People are bought and sold right here in their own backyards. Not only are they bought and sold, but they're kept as sex slaves right here in America, right here in the good old U.S. of A. What am I saying? I'm saying that this Tuesday, January the 11th, 2022, is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. Let us speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Let us speak for, for, uh, on behalf of the rights of those who are destitute. Our scripture admonished us to do that. So let us be obedient and do that. Speak up for them. Speak up on their behalf. Apparently, it is a known fact that victims of sex trafficking are also used to supply the demand for pornographic websites. These women and children are not only exploited for physical sexual gratification, but for cyber gratification by way of internet porn sites. The sex abuser terrorists are maximizing their profits to the fullest while the victims are living a subhuman life of pure hell and torment. This is not right and it must be stopped. And you know what? Some pastors are to blame for that. Some pastors visit websites regularly. One of my, a friend of mine, um, a manager, he told me a story about a pastor who came in to get a loan from him. And he, he said that he watched a lot of pornographic websites. A pastor. Pastors are addicted to porn. You are a part of the problem if you're addicted to porn. Here's what I'm wondering. 
How can banks and internet processing companies knowingly service sites like these as if it's business as usual? Apparently some of these sites even trade on a stock exchange. It's like what J.P. Morgan was apparently um, known to have said. He said, no one hates war more than me. While financing both sides of the war. Well, if that isn't an oxymoron or a conflict of interest at best, then I don't know what. But the truth is, it's an oxymoron. A total contradiction. The proof is in the action. What you want to achieve, you will work for. Likewise, you will not finance what you do not believe in. You will not finance that which you despise. But I wonder, I wonder if anyone in the sound of my voice is the victim of sex trafficking. Or maybe you were not sold into to, to, to the sex as a sex slave, but you were a victim of sexual abuse. If you are, or if you were, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Come to Jesus. Let him heal you. I'm telling you that he loves you. Do not believe the lie of the devil that says that if Jesus loved you, he would not let that happen to you. Let me ask you this. Did the devil prevent you that from happening to you? All those terrible things? Did he prevent that from happening to you? The answer is no. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Think about this. When Jesus stretched open his arms so that his hands would be nailed to the cross, he was saying, I love you this much. All this pain, all this suffering, all the whipping, the bleeding, the punching, the tearing out of my hair, the tearing out of my beard is worth it because you're worth it. Jesus believes that you, were, you are so worthy to him that he would die for you. When was the last time someone told you that you was worth so much to them that they would die for you? Jesus did. Jesus said that when he hung on the cross. He said, you're worth it. You're not just some old thing. You're not just somebody. You're everything to me. And I'm willing to die for you. And he did. He was beaten. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. And he rose again. And he's coming back to get us. Those who love him. Those who accept his healing. So come to Jesus. Let him heal you. It might not happen all overnight. Some scars are deep. Some wounds are hard. Memories are hard. But the love of Jesus will wash all of that away. He's promised us a place that is where, where there will be no more exploitation. No more hurt. No more pain. No more people trying to trick you and trying to take advantage of you. Just love and worthiness. Jesus loves you. If you want to be loved by Jesus, if you want to accept his love, here's what you do. Tell him. Tell him that you accept his love. And he will love you. He'll come back for you. He'll take you to be where he is. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I accept your gift of love. I accept your forgiveness. I pray that you would heal my scars. Take away the pain. Take away the hurt. Help me to forgive those who have wronged me. Help me to live for you. That when you come back, 
I'll be ready and that I'll live with you forever in peace and in love and harmony in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, Jesus is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He will send his angels and give them charge over you. I'm not promising you that your life is going to be all a bed of roses now. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying though is that Jesus will be with you. His love will protect you. His love will surround you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.